So good to see. I mean, hey, maybe Rogo Bay turns into Villa as well. Who knows, right? right. Now, one thing that both these teams are very good at, and I'm going to give a slight edge to SK Gaming here just in regards to this, is that SK Gaming oftentimes come prepared deliberately with strats that they haven't shown anywhere else to deliberately try and counter a team. Now, EG is one of the most thorough teams in terms of counter stratting. They're usually uh, one of the most methodical about what they ban, how do they enter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you've, you've got a number of players on that team who are incredibly intelligent players. They've got game, good game sense. They've got a good logic and, and theory behind why they do things. There was a big blow there, of course, when they lost BC. He was often one of the crucial elements to what made EG so good. So, I mean, there's a way for both of these teams to get around each other and sidestep each other in the operator bands. There's nothing really that weird here. There's a glass band that's going to go out. Now, SK, who banned the glass, they run glass from time to time, especially they'll put mint on that roll, but they know that it's much more of a staple in EG with both Necrox and Geo playing that. Yep. And Mav is just, well, we saw in C9 Noble what Mav can do, especially in the hands of C9. It's not really much of a surprise, and England noted this in the interview that you ban a Mav, you ban possibly a Lion, and things are going to go very different, but look at that. Lion remains unbanned. He will be uncaged and unsheathed, as that's Jarvis going to be running it. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jarvis is uh, usually a player that we see uh, on a Capital roll, on attack. He's been very successful on that Operator, but here I guess they just don't want to worry about any potential flanks or roam play from EG, as of course, SK are bringing Mint on the Monty. It's also a strategy that they have utilized in the past and has worked out pretty well, darn well for them. So I wonder how they're going to go for the attack. Pojoman is running the Thermite, but I want to see if Necrox is uh, going for impact this time around as well uh, on his smoke because uh, those might be instrumental to shut down any, uh, any play, but they also have the Legion in play for EG. So. Potential four sets of impacts. Uh, impacts. Two of them will be more than enough. The Legion sometimes is played off of the site. You don't always need to have him on there. This time, at least, he's staying in the golf early on. And that's exactly where he's probably going to be the whole time. I mean, you've got good range from the vault as well to be able to toss out those goo mines. NVK looking to see if anybody's going to peek as he's got a tiny slit beneath that barricade. You go for a spawn peek if need be and really give a huge sucker punch to SK if they don't anticipate it. So for SK, they're going to begin their assault on the study. So not much of a surprise there. There's really only two ways to go about your main push onto the site. You'll go through the study or you'll push onto the vault. That's typically the way we see. Obviously, there's impact tricking available on both sides. You can bandit trick on both sides if need be, but EG not investing in the bandit at all either. So it's going to be interesting to see the way this gets played. Yeah, maybe they'll be running uh, Canadian on the C4 downstairs. He also has Geo with an extra bit of uh, C4 to use, so they have him below. He has all the advantages there, but frag grenades will get thrown out here by Nyx as he takes out a bit of the floorboard at range. And just below A site, it's Nyx trying to find the angle on the smoke playing right up top. It's Necrox again, but he moves away at the very last second, so... Nyx pressuring the smoke as we saw before, just forcing the smoke in position and in tandem there with the Lion E1D, hot and cold. We'll find the kill on Canadian and clear out the pulse and a C4. And they just miss Necrox as well. So very, very close to possibly getting a kill underneath after they lose the pulse. And that's a pretty important piece of EG's puzzle here. The opening that was created by NVK, whether or not Houghton can see through this debris. He will! Oh, he picks up another kill, and NVK will fall the head of Doc. Gone, and you can't stim pistol yourself back from that one. But Geo on the roam from below. He'll take out Nyx, and that's a big kill to be able to eliminate the buck. It's a lot of soft destruction from below, so EG can sit a little bit prettier, and now Necrox trying to take an engagement down the hall. And he's going to miss those shots. He's going to get up very aggressive, though. And oh, does he not see Houghton? He's going to get the Monte Necrox with two. Oh, man, SK, a bit of sloppiness, and it will cost them dearly. So it's just Jarvis and Pojo Man. And Jarvis will down the Legion, but won't be able to secure the kill. There's a smoke around the corner. He'll be able to choke it off. And it's just Necrox and Geo who are upright. Well, Jarvis walks into the site. As you already see, the smoke canisters have been thrown in to the side. The Valkyrie has a bit of an angle to shoot in onto Pojo Man as he 
from the grave. It's the Legion trying to make things a bit more complicated here. On the attack as Geo peeks in and lands the two headshots, taking down Pojo Man. And the Lion, of course, right before that. Perfect play from Geo to hold the cross angle. And there's some uh, pretty nutty shots that were going on here and there. Necrox hitting some of them as well, just turning around and getting shots. That's, um, I, I, I was not expecting the round to rely so much on pure aim skill. Yeah, there, was, there wasn't there was really much in the way there to stop anybody. There wasn't any concussives of Zofia uh, to worry about. You know, there wasn't really any echoes that needed to be worried about. It's it's really interesting to see the way that got played out. I mean, obviously, mind you, Echo is banned, Zofia is not. So there was that was just, that was very classic year one early just you don't have to worry about anything you just take fights you just take engagements you know etc one thing to note is that before mouse's game uh han cold was tied with vertical for you know top kills those are those are old stats old stats yeah that was only through the first seven games what yes i know why it has been updated why i don't know okay but that's okay through the first half though Okay. You are correct. Yes. Okay. So he's tied for him in the first half, so which is the, irrelevant for the second half. Th yeah, but through the first half, you had Hot and Cold, who was very hot. Is he cold during the second half? Because his name would suggest that at some points, he's both hot and then cold. It's a good thing you're yeah, here, because you're asking the real big questions here, Park. I mean, that's that's why they pay me. Why are you doing play-by-play play at this yeah. point? That's why they pay me in Rainbow Six credits. I get paid in Renown and Rainbow Six credits to talk about the really pressing issues. Well, I don't know. You need to check your contract again, because I'm getting paid charms. And we all know, oh. charms on Twitter with giveaways, they give you clout. And that's what's important. That's the big currency on social media. So basically, you're getting paid in clout. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Anywho. Houghton has been a proficient member of this team, and he's gotten two kills early on to be able to, to come in uh, and, and open up that round, especially on the Canadian and then NVK, but the rest of the team did quite well, and I think there was SK really getting a little, they were getting a little lost, and you saw Jarvis in particular, he came in, he hit the goo mine, he kept pushing forward, he was anticipating that somebody would be inside of the bar area over by games, there wasn't anybody there, he ended up looking the wrong way, they knew there was a call at the door, it had been made by Pojo earlier on, coming all the way over from Statue, but it was just, it was too little too late there, and they end up being victims of the clock. So EG holding on, holding on for dear hope, and winning that overall. So SK need to make sure they commit somebody to that possible flank, because Geo was such a strong positional player for EG, and he really did wreak havoc through that mid-round. Well, Necrox is still positioned on the site as a usual position for him. Still haven't seen anybody clash with the clash of Young just yet. They're playing in more to protect themselves from the back. Hot and cold, setting up to take down the bottom floor here of Astronomy. Maybe get some picks from below. It is obviously an, an advantageous position for you to use to deal with a Clash if she has been spotted. But right now, check in the wine cellar. Nobody's in there to uh, fight against them, as usually there is nobody standing in there. And Young, interestingly enough, just standing right in the window here in the walk-in closet. He's got Canadian to help as well as Geo. We'll land the first one on Pojo Man, taking down the well, one of the two hard breachers here for SK Gaming. That's a very big opening kill as well for that team. And I mean opening, it happens in two minutes. So you saw SK were very quick and nimble the first yeah, time around, but they've the got a different site to deal with here. And now they're going to be confronted with a clash. And some damage will just rattle off and roll off the back of the clash as it hits the shield, doesn't really do anything. Canadian is there as well in a position as he's going to have a get out of jail free card get opened up. He's possibly going to get pressured from inside a bathroom. NVK is going to be the opening frag for EG and then there goes Young. Just looks the wrong way. This does not bode well for Canadian. He's going to have to fight his way out. He'll obliterate hot and cold and despite being completely blinded, they're going to push the mute. He's going to walk right up. He's going to tag out Jarvis and now from the side, the Hibana not too far away. Mint is going to need to collect this kill, but all the while, Canadian doing an excellent job wasting time. He's going to get flashed, and can he get jumped on? There you go, through the window, but it's a trade-out. Geo is there to get it, and Nyx is SK's only hope. They'll rely on him for the final 10 seconds, and Necrox will try to evade the wrath of that C8. He'll toss out a Toxic Babe, and he'll finish things off. Amar getting that final kill, and EG will go up 2-0, and finally, it seemed like we weren't going to get it today. The defense winning <laughs> more rounds than the attackers here on Villa. Yeah, I mean, with two squads that are all up uh, on the top of the board for North America, close between one another, 
this is what ends up happening is that the metagame actually starts to, uh, you know, hunker things down and make things a lot more stable, which is obviously what we were expecting and talking about at the start. You're not expecting the attacking side to take more rounds in defense on Villa, but already two rounds. It's a good start for EG. The clash play was pretty darn good. This time, it's possibly Canadian that'll stay on it unless they six pick away as they're playing in the living room and the library. And he will indeed go for the six pick. I wonder what he's going to go for. His mint in the meantime switches off to the Blackbeard. Canadian might want to actually stick this. I think they're talking around here. We might see uh, the combo. No, there you go. Canadian will go for the pulse. So the the good thing about playing the pulse here is that obviously the C4 gives you extra reach. You don't have to worry about contesting top floor with your uh, with your UMP if you can just get spots and then chuck a C4 into it. Now I mentioned this site in the very uh, well in our previous matchup. It's not something that we usually will see because it's much more complicated to defend, especially when you don't have a mirror. Even then, the mirror can be dealt with pretty darn easily. So it's all about setting up a a bit of a bunker to defend within the, the uh, painting room. And then ha you have to worry about the uh, the bathroom. That's the most important, uh, important part of it. If you're on the attacking side, that is the first step into attacking into the site. And that's why you see the mute jammers that have been set up for NVK, as the bathroom is an important part of it. You can just walk in and plant from the opposite end by the living room, but you expose yourself to so many angles. It's very interesting to see this site because we, I feel like we've maybe seen it less than 10 times across all of Pro League. It's League's definitely so the most it's, underplayed. Oh, absolutely. And it was it was the same role that we saw Hookah uh, use on Coastline as well for quite a while there. Is it was just, it was never really in use. And there's a variety of different ways for people to attack it. And a big part of why you never really see it is that it's, I think, as of right now, it is the one site where there have not been enough strategies to see shake out around it to make it easy to defend in comparison to the rest, right? So. No. I mean, that's basically gifting around to SK, at Bob least in terms of possibly an advantage. Maybe they're not ready for it. Maybe they're not ready for it, but they do definitely have a benefit there mm -hmm. in the fact that it's an easier to attack site. And they've already been able to get very close to that main double doorway. There you can see, they'll walk through the main double doorway. And now they see the one door which had the castle barricade on it that they've taken care of. And Nyx has been somebody who's been tasked with playing very well off site. But what is he capable of co accomplishing near sight? Because, well, he's still staring at that doorway, and there's a Toxic Babe that's going to get thrown out a little early, but it's going to force SK to have to rotate, and that's also going to buy time for EG's roamers to try and get back to the site. The thing with SK is that they can't rotate without information, and that's what the Mute Jammers are going to be holding them back from knowing. Yeah, the thing is, you have the buck here. You have the opportunity to walk upstairs and use that to your advantage, but NVK is turning off here. He'll get the first kill, and then it's hot and cold off on the Ash. And the top-down play will not be available here, especially with having, um, you know, the manpower advantage in EG's hand. Kind of have to dedicate someone to f watch the flanks as there's the stairs and positioning from the wine cellar to worry about. The Blackbeard is down on the floor as we will see equipment being chucked into the face of the smoke <gasps> mint with the one tap. Canadian, whoa, wow, what a shot. NVK, the refrag on to Nexus Young. will put himself in the gallery. Mint trying to walk on in here with 45 seconds on the clock. And the final EE1D is going to get burned and the execute's going to need to happen. There's not a lot of plant denial available. Necrox found spotted. Mint with his second kill. Strong play from the Blackbeard thus far to just obliterate everybody coming in. NVK on a big rotate upstairs through Gun Vault. They're going to have to try to take care of Pojo Man. And there you go. Through the floor upstairs. NVK a big kill. And that's his third, if I recall correctly. Doing an excellent job this round in particular. Jarvis will get down and finished off. NVK is just on a reign of terror for the time being. It's all up to the Blackbeard, but it's Geo there to get the final frag needed for EG, showing off the wonderful skin charm combination that you too can purchase in the eShop. And it's 3 nothing for EG. Yeah, well, I hope everybody that's watching bought all the skins for all the teams, because I definitely did the instant they came out, including the Penta skin. So there you go, support eSports, because we'll just uh, have a couple seconds here to mind you, Six Invitational already has a $650,000 uh, price pool, but that can be increased with your purchase of uh, <laughs> this equipment. So, yes, that is it is a it is a revenue sharing mm -hmm. 
service. So, I mean, that's there's a cut of the profit that goes towards... Hey, the, your favorite team's team. SK? Buy their skin, they get a, a cut of it. It's good. They keep playing. Your favorite team is FaZe? Buy their skin, etc. Same thing. Anywho, on that round in particular, a couple things that went sideways okay, for SK. They never were attacker. able to figure out where NVK was, not just because of the mute jammers, but because almost nobody from SK was tasked with controlling that second floor. I, I mentioned the buck in the very first 10 seconds. I'm like, you have a buck, play the top down. Why are you trying to push yourself through the one hole when you can go up and pressure from the top floor? And because he wasn't there and had no one to support him, it meant that NVK can just walk on up and use the hole to his advantage and get kills off of it. And you saw all three just walk into his crosshairs. And worth noting here is not only is this a spot for Rio, but it's also a spot for the invitation. Yep. So the the eight teams that will be going to Rio, I think NVK is trying to do a smiley face. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't think he was trying to do a smiley face. But anyway, not only is this a spot at Rio, but the eight teams that do go to Rio will then turn around and go to Montreal. Now, we already know that G2 is qualified, C9 is qualified, FaZe is qualified at the APAC Finals this weekend, Nora Rengo, who we saw in Paris, they're going to be going to the Invitational, and then Fnatic is going to be going back to the Invitational. Last time they were there as Mind Freak. So those are, right now, the five teams that are guaranteed to be in Montreal. If this ends up being a definitive victory for either EG or SK, there will be a sixth team that will join them. It will be one of these two combatants. If it ends up being a draw and Rogue loses the next matchup against Obey, then it will be both of these teams that will go. Yep. So that's the math that you're looking at right now. So it's not just a spot for Rio on the line, but also for the biggest event of the year of Rainbow Six, the 2019 Invitational. Now, a bit of a mistimed lion here, and this clash is just going to taunt the buck, and Nyx didn't have an opportunity to pull the frag out in time, and possibly could have been able to get Young, and that is going to go Ooh. up. Oh, it's actually going to down <laughs> Young. Great play from Nyx. He's going to try to finish things off here as there's more marks, and Young's going to get picked back up from a well-timed stim pistol, but look at that. Necrox and NVK. NVK is going to get down, and this is just... We said that in that last round, there wasn't a lot of vertical pressure. It's whack-a-mole, man. And it's here in spades. Both NVK, Necrox, and Young taking a lot of damage. That very much is a game of whack-a-mole. Just take them down and pick them back right on up. Well, there you go. At least the manpower is still available, but it's a trade. Canadian and Nyx take one another out as that Salesian traded off for the buck. An equal trade in manpower and in utility for both of these teams. Of course, we've seen the Legion do quite a bit of damage end of the round, especially with the information, but that's MVK down out of play. The Clash is still in and is denying at least one half of the attacking side by the Aviator Room. And you can still move around and use her utility to your advantage, but not comboing it or not being able to combo it with one of your other teammates to secure a kill might be the biggest detriment, really. You can't do much when the Clash is all on our own, you just slow things down. You need to play something extra with it. Necrox is going to try to slow things down here for the attacking side as he whiffs the shots, and that's Mint to connect with his. Taking down Necrox Geo from below with a C4 still available as the Ash is just running into the gun vault. We'll have a look onto Young, the C4 from below, and Geo will deny the plant from Pojo Man and him out of play. 15 seconds on the clock. Mint will pick it up, and there you go. We're talking about the pool table in the previous map. Lion will spot Geo as he moves into the side. He'll get spotted. Take down the defused plant as Young is still on his own. The attackers cannot go for that plant just yet. With zero seconds on the clock, it's the clash to save the day. And the round will go to the defense. My god. Houghton deciding to run through the door to attack the Clash when he could have possibly fetched that Diffuser and gone for the plant is a head-scratcher in and of itself, not to mention the, ra the way that the rest of that was played out. You saw that both members of EG were hauling as fast as they could to get back to site. You had possible coverage from Jarvis inside a study to catch that push from the Valkyrie up the main stairs. As inside a study, Jarvis had that line of sight, didn't take the opportunity to do that. SK just putting in one of, I think, their least decisive plays so far. Really, it's this has not looked like the team that has been able to fire on all cylinders. And I mean, it's not even just that Villa is a map where, where as we will say now, because we've seen Villa three times today, yeah, you know, we're, we're expecting the defense to win. 
No. You're not expecting the defense to win four to one. You know, maybe three to two, okay. I don't think we're at a point right now with the rotation Defenders where you can be expecting a 4-0. And I mean, possibly even a 5-0. There's, there's very little from SK outside of that round that has led me to believe that they are capable of winning a round right now. Yep. And I mean, they've been making a lot of mistakes. They started out that round so strong, lots of pressure from below, excellent droning, trying to pin EG down in the spots where you know they're likely going to be, using the verticality against EG and dealing continuous damage. It's a good thing they had the dock, which they've been running most of the time, because they've just been, their HP getting chipped away from. But then it just kind of stalled out midway through. They traded off, as you noted. They got towards the site. They had control. They lost control. There was nobody covering one main doorway that Geo just walked right through. It's just a lot of mistakes, a lot of little mistakes right now for us. And that's really all it takes. When you're playing at the highest level in Pro League and professional playing Siege, one tiny misposition. The fact that you weren't able to run your, or, you know, stick a diffuser. The the fact that you weren't able to run one of your your attackers uh, to grab the diffuser and go for the plant ASAP, whilst the other one delays the clash at the end of the round. All of that combos together. The fact that you couldn't deal with a pulse earlier in the round, even though you had the advantage in every other way. All of that will come back to bite you at some point because when we're looking again at the top level of professional play. One operator can do a lot of damage if the utility is used correctly. And in this case, the Pulse plus the Clash used it perfectly. It's a 101 course on how to stick those operators and use them in tandem with your uh, teammates to be able to clutch around at the end of it. And there you go, the advantage all in SK's hand turns to EG win 4-0. The one scary thing is that if you're EG right now, you've got Lion at your disposal on attack. We know that he gets run, either NVK or Necrox will be inhabiting that role. And man, can he paralyze a good defense really, really well. And if there's anybody right now who looks very well coordinated, it's EG. Now, mind you, a lot of EG's success has come on to the way that Geo's been playing. He's been just all over this map, back and forth, getting his step count in, making sure that he's the marathon man that they need. Everybody will be frozen in place. So the Asphyxiating Bolt take quite a bit of HP off of Young. Now NBK is going to lose some HP as well. So SK are doing an excellent job of, like I said, chipping away at the HP. But on the other side of the coin, they lose that Exothermic Charge. And that's part of why teams run Hibana so well, because it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get that wall open anytime soon. And that can be a particular headache. They opened up the bottom side of it, but Canadian from below this patch is next, so no more grenades to be used by the buck to deal with the clash from the bottom up. And there you go. You see the angle that's been opened up, but that's not enough to move through. And Jarvis is going to try to hold off here as the lesion just runs on through. Geo will scurry away and sit by the statue in statuary room. and will hold the cross angle to use the clash as well in tandem. I think they already used the second crossbow bolt for hot and cold, if I'm not mistaken there. That did not connect but there's still the two smoke ones to, to use on the opposite end of the balcony, just in case they need to push it. There's a flank coming in from Canadian, though, that they might not be aware of. Young giving all the information needed. Geo still off-site, NVK now coming in, so everybody is rotating from EG, and there's Young taking matters into his old hands, putting his shield away, and he'll find hot and cold. So, EG, now with Necrox down and some damage done to everybody else, they hold a huge advantage. Big C4 gets tossed out, Geo pops up, he'll shred through mid, breaks the shield, goes for a second on a Pojo, losing the fight, NVK on flank. He sees Jarvis as Pojo and Jarvis get two big kills, but Pojo needs to start the plant. It's going down, Canadian is there to stop Jarvis, and Pojo very exposed, EG putting together a sweep of defense, five to nothing, guaranteeing one point, and if my math is correct, because they hold the tiebreakers, no matter what happens, EG will be going to Montreal. Yep. Rio and Montreal both That's correct. confirmed. Remember that last, if they, well, with the, with the Even with here, the tie, they should, even with the they, tie. they should have 24 points, mm -hmm. which would mean that if SK wins their next matchup, and let's say SK loses this, then they win their next. It would still not be enough. EG would still finish second because they can't finish third because they have the tiebreaker against Rogue. So no matter what, that one round, EG will go to Rio and for the third year, every single invitational, Evil Geniuses has been there. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, then we'll see maybe there if they can, uh, you know, win things out for once. <laughs> but that aside, you know, trickery and all of that uh, banter, as they say up in the other side of the world, aside, it was a fantastic round from EG.
the way that they maneuvered around the map and were able... Canadian was pretty much everywhere at every single Attack moment. I feel like Canadian was the only one who, kept, who, who stayed on site. He just kept rotating site rooms, but we saw Young and him were up there, but then NVK rotated. In the final 20 seconds, NVK rotates the entire map. Necrox just stayed perfectly static. Geo starts to rotate. Next thing you know, every single member of EG is running around the map like the Mad Men that they have been known to be, and it worked out quite well. And it's just, it seems like SK keeps stalling. I'm, I'm confused as to why they keep bringing a Thermite on a map where we know how strong impact tricking is. We know how little usage you can get out of a Thermite yep. if the defenders set it up correctly, and EG's been nailing it every time. That's why you saw C9, Noble, SSG, Mouse. None of them brought a Thermite, and there's a reason for that. We, we went through it fairly extensively, actually. Here, Villa being the third time shown here today, I think we won't repeat the same point uh, a 17th billionth time. Uh, so for now, SK Gaming at least will bring the Maestro as this matchup, we didn't see a ban for Maestro. We'll get to see him for once being played. Uh, Echo being banned means we won't have the, the smoke Maestro combo, but we'll see Jarvis on the L. He's been fairly successful on the operator, but it does require him to combo very well with yet another operator. In this case, very smartly from SK Gaming, they bring Mint on the Clash. So that is also something to, to worry about. If you're EG, not only now do you have the Clash in front of you to slow you down, but you also have an Ella that will shred you and is one of the best counters to really anything up close and up to medium range. I mean, Villa, if you're being able to engage in the close quarters fights, which we've seen people be able to do quite well, then obviously you're going to get maximum value out of that Scorpion. Ella is not the operator that she used to be. She can't snipe you from long range, but if you're keeping a close engagement in hand, then you can do a great job. And well, Nyx, who's been having a bad game, it's not gonna get any better at all. Say goodbye, he gets picked off by Canadian. And there you have it. And immediately Canadian, after getting that opening frag, will use one of the EE1Ds. They'll see Mint, and fearing a possible push from below, he'll begin to step back. Burning the ADS and taking out the Evil Eye, it's a push down 90 as EG has almost full coverage. And they'll start to work away at the Gun Vault as there goes an Asphyxiating Bolt. Very difficult as they try to double up. Oh so long, Mint. EG are just firing on all cylinders. And they'll open up Gun Vault as Mint gets deleted from time and space. <laughs> inside of the hallway. Oh my god, that was so much utility used to deal with him, but hot and cold at least getting the refrag on Geo. Avengers followed teammate Pojo Man with the second one to turn it into a 3v3. Now EG suddenly slow things down, but not too much as Young will come in on the Habana. Get one, Pojo Man with a shotgun, he'll find the two! NVK and Young are both down and Canadian. Trying to save the round in a 2v1. Lots of time here left, but the shotgun in hand and the CZ yeah, both are perfect to deal with him up close. He just triggered both the Gujmat mines as well, so they know where he is, and it looks like he might have even triggered the third. As he's just gonna run around here. The bomb will provide some help. He sees the head of the Ella, but he can't land his shots onto Jarvis, and this is the best round that we've seen for SK in terms of winnability. And we'll try to peek against the ups. Oh, he finds the headshot on Pojo Man. The Ella, last man alive here. He'll get burned from the back, his low health. This is Canadian, he'll go back, has the rotation hole to play with here into the vault. And the, trying to pre-fire against the Ella to the opposite end, he'll grab the diffuser, 10 seconds on the clock. Can he waste enough time here? The Ella trying to fight against him in the 1v1, he'll go for the drop, but Jarvis is ready! And he'll land the headshot on Canadian to take him out in SK. They might have been down, but they are not out just yet. we will put the first round on the board for a 5-1 still advantage for EG. Former teammates fighting against each other. Final three members left. All Canadian boys fighting to see which team is going to go on. Just a bit of national pride on my end there. Yeah. I don't get to use that card often. What a shot on a Pojo that was through yes. the bomb chassis. An incredible read. I don't think Pojo was looking that way. Was probably watching the secondary door. Had his back turned and Canadian came a bullet or two away from a miraculous clutch and will at least give some comfort to SK knowing that even if this does continue to go south for them, that it wasn't a sweep across the board. They managed to put one on the board. How incredible it would be to see both these teams be able to come back here. That would really be something. But for the time being, EG very much in the driver's seat. Trophy and statuary room will be the second defense for SK. They may not have a lot of them left. This might be it, so we'll see what they're able to do. And I, I would imagine that for SK, this looks to, to be the way that Nyx has been developing as a player. 
going back to where he was around the time that they first played this match. Now, we go back to week three, SK162 on border. BC was still on the roster for EG, they didn't have Geo. They still had Bacon as a coach, and SK, Nyx had only played one match prior to that, if I recall correctly. And even in the matchup against EG, in week three, Nyx was still making quite a bit of mistakes. He was playing as Echo for most of the time. I remember he was making a lot of costly peaks and taking fights, throwing his utility away, and being a little too aggressive. That might have worked in the amateur leagues that he played in before, but he was getting punished quite badly here in Pro League. And well, he's been doing a much better job. He's really come into his own as a player and has been doing quite a bit of work for SK. He's fit their system quite well. He's had a pretty bad matchup so far. He continuously keeps getting peaked. He's getting a bit too aggressive, and that's really hurting because it consistently puts SK at a 4 v 5 Yeah, and you can't always rely on clutch plays at the end of the round to, to win it out for you. It'll get you one, but the advantage in EG's hands for very good reason. The calculated play, team play, that is what will get you the overall win if you are at this level of play when both teams are so tied in terms of skill and pedigree. Uh, maybe not an offline play, but still uh, quite a bit of history between the two and the two in general for North America Pro League. But Geo entering in, they'll take control here, EG, of the, uh, the bedroom. It's her first line of attack. Of course, they'll take down the first evil eye of the Maestro, make sure that uh, their hard breacher of uh, Young on the Habana can just move in and start chipping away at the bedroom wall to the hallway. They'll have to deal with the clash in front of them as Mint is yet again bringing the operator here. And the lifeline is still available. Geo will force one smoke to get used. Tandem with one of the Lion E1Ds. So a lot of time here with the all three Exiris actually being used pretty quickly. Unfortunately, Young not able to open a full hole to walk in through. Houghton is primed and ready to receive Young as one flinches for just a second. The Maestro could be rewarded with a big kill, but there goes Pojo and Houghton just too much hesitation. He'll have to retreat as he's going to be frozen, and he'll get Young. Incredibly so. It should have been an opportunity, and there we see the Jaegers head pop up for just a second, and it will be removed. Canadian just subtracting Nyx from the equation as well as subtracting his head from his neck. So three v four. SK, one minute to go. I'm very impressed with how EG has wasted very little time. They have looked so good. They are not dawdling at all. Oh, and on his belly, Houghton, prone with the LMG. That's an important pick on the Canadian. No more Lion will be available. And once again, SK are in a position to conceivably be able to pull this one out. NVK walking in. Unfortunately, the IQ does not have those grenades anymore. I'd love to have those to chuck them on the opposite end of the balcony to Trophy. The Clash trying to disrupt their their opponents as much as possible. One smoke bolt will get thrown in as they're running up for the next one. Firebolt and asphyxiating bolt into mint will be dropped down on the floor and eliminated. MVK and Geo, one each, all up to Jarvis, but it's a 3v1 and Geo lap finds the last one on a Jarvis, as unfortunately there might have been one entryway, but not accounting for Geo coming in and playing the long range play with the M762. Wins things out, too focused at the end. EG take the win 6-1, definitely not something that we were expecting, but uh, man, EG, they're, they're going to Rio, and they're going to 6 Invitational now. It's a pretty good spot to be in. Uh, calculations now will go uh, to possibly maybe have Rogue qualifying as well but they still need to win their, their match and as convincing as possible. Not only do they need to win their match against Obey, but this is danger territory for SK because SK plays Rogue next week. Yep. If Rogue wins this matchup today against Obey, and it puts them in a position where the winner of the SK Rogue matchup goes to Rio and it literally comes down to the wire. So SK is going to be hoping that Obey are capable of finding their footing maybe being motivated by the prospect of not uh, necessarily falling into that auto relegation spot. They got, Obey got a win earlier today uh, in the sense that Noble got a loss. Mm -hmm. Now they want to continue to put some more points on, on Noble. They have to rely on, SK has to rely on Rogue losing their match today. If Rogue wins today, this puts us up for one hell of a matchup next Monday to see which team of the two. And this this window right now is wide open for Rogue. It has just been flung open thanks to EG with that 6-1 victory 
and quite a convincing performance too. Even that one round that SK won came down to a 1v1 straight on gunfight where Canadian was losing out on time. Yeah, and this is something that you mentioned earlier on, Parker, is that once you get into a position so late into the season, your qualification spot and win is no longer in your hand. Right. In this case, however, Rogue can make it through. So this might change the plans for everyone. As looking through the entirety of the season, it was at some point Noble and Space Station up top. Then things began, began to stabilize into what we've been used to with uh, EG on top with Rogue. And then that fell up as SK got better and better and the change with Nyx a couple weeks immediately got into form and started pu to push SK higher up on the board. Now it's EG up top. Now they're qualified no matter what, even if they lose next week. There's a lot of calculations to be made and Rogue this time has their fate in their hands. Absolutely. So a huge victory from EG. We'll talk to their captain Canadian on what this means for them. And we'll bring up an interview for us here to take us through. Congratulations, Troy. Thank you, Parker. Nice smile for you there and for everybody. Uh, I think you've retweeted enough. Let's get that bread tweet every single day. Even, yeah, boy. even, even going so bread. far, as you added the bread to your name even. Yeah, we want this bread. We're hungry. The boys are hungry. <laughs> well, you ate today and you feasted upon SK. And the one thing that I remarked to Milos, especially on your two rounds on, uh, on attack, was you wasted very little time. Now, I'm not obviously going to ask if you were specifically prepared for Villas. Obviously, I don't want you and I don't expect you to give away high-level strategies and all that jazz. But there was almost no downtime for your attacks. How much of that was premeditated versus how much of that was just simply on the fly calling without giving too much away? Um, the attacks actually were completely premeditated. Um, we knew they didn't expect us to play Villa, especially considering Bacon was our former coach and he knew we used the permaban it. I'm sure he was insisting that we would never play Villa. And uh, we, we decided to pick it up for the SK match, catch them off guard. Uh, we brought in Gotcha as our coach, who actually brought in some Villa strats for us, so it helped speed up the learning process of it. And he did very, very intense preparation for the map. Uh, we knew how they held on their defenses. We knew which sides of the map were free. They stacked very heavy on the study side um, on both defenses. So we knew that if we went from the master side both times, we would get very quick map control. Uh, so we just we took advantage of that. We, uh, we abused it. And, and a big thing on, on Villa as well is it's a very defensive sided map. So just kind of playing playing with a mindset like once you have the map control, like play like you already lost because like playing out a 5v5, uh, usually just if you just straight up try to execute, doesn't work out too well. Um, so just the right mindset, a lot of preparation, all that. Big shout out to Gotcha for that. Now, outfoxing one of the teams that is known for meticulously counter-stratting and surprising their own opponents. Now, it's a pretty big feather in your cap. Let's focus on Gotcha for just a second here. First and foremost, he comes in, you win your first match. Not only are you now going to Rio, you're also going to the Invitational, so congratulations on that. But where did this Gotcha pick come from? Because I think it caught a lot of people off guard. I mean, losing BC obviously caught a lot of people off guard, but now even picking up Gotcha, I think, came out of nowhere to a lot of people. Why Gotcha? What does he bring? And other than the strats on Villa, what has his set of eyes brought to your team over the last week or so? Um, so one thing that we knew we wanted in a coach, like we were very, we weren't, weren't just actively looking to get a coach no matter what. Uh, we wanted to make sure we got the right fit. And by that, I mean, we, we needed someone that understood the game at the pro level. Uh, we didn't, we didn't want to waste time with somebody like who we would have to kind of teach the meta or anything like that. We wanted to make sure they understood the game at the highest level and like would be just like on par with us when discussing strats and preparation and all that. Um, and, and he understands the game really well. Um, he, he made all the strats on his challenger league team on disrupt. Um, did all the preparation, that kind of stuff. So uh, Gotcha understands the game really well. Um, although their team did have a reputation for playing a little recklessly and whatnot, um, he, he does understand the game really well, which is important to have in a coach. And also he has insane work ethic, which is extremely important and very, very rare um, amongst the pro scene, in my opinion. I, I don't think there's actually that many people that work really hard. I think in NA, we have a lot of lazy pros and uh, making sure that we could get a coach that, that kind of had the same work ethic as us and was willing to put in a lot of time uh, was very important to us, and he does just that. 
Well, it certainly worked out in this matchup, though we'll see how far that can translate in your match against Obey next week, and then, of course, in Rio, and then onward. So, always great to hear your input. Anything to say to the abundance of EG fans who had your back in the community vote and are no doubt spamming your emotes and woos in the chat? Yeah, I, I owe them one now that we, uh, that we secured our spot. I think we uh, cemented first seat as well now, since we 6-1'd SK, so we have the tiebreaker against them as well, so... Um, that is correct. I, I, I really owe them this. Woo! Thank you very much, Troy. Always a, always a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, you too, Parker. Thanks. I think he's, he's absolutely correct there, and I'm glad that he brought that up because now, technically, they've got eight points to SK7 because it was a 6-2 the first time around. Now it was a 6-1, so yep. no matter what happens, this could be a huge blessing for Obey next week because... Obey is going to be playing EG, who have nothing to gain from a victory other than stab padding. You hide your strats, you coast, that's a potential huge victory. But before they get there, they've got Rogue up next, and Rogue still trying to make their way to Rio. That window, as I said, that door is wide open. We'll throw to a quick break, and we've got our final matchup up next. <laughs> 